All right, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor right now. Would you please stand and let's get a little rowdy. Now, first of all, I need to see where are my people that were in my breakout session. Let me see right there. All right, these guys know exactly what we're about to do. And so how many of you think it's okay for us to get rowdy? Come on, let me see you. Okay, when I'm saying rowdy, I'm like, let's raise the roof rowdy, all right? So, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to do something you've probably never said in your life, and maybe we're never even given permission to say this, but I'm giving you permission right now, and I'm asking you to join me in making a declaration about your life on the count of three at the top of your voice. And I'm not talking quiet. I'm talking raise it. I mean, we're going to blow the speakers right now. I'm going to ask you to out loud say, I am epic. I'm giving you permission right now to make a declaration. On the count of three, at the top of your voice, let me hear it. One, two, three. Okay. Next time, I want you to raise the roof a little bit. All right, so volume up. On the count of three, I am epic. One, two, three. All right, turn to somebody on your right or your left, and I want you to point at them, make a declaration. You are epic. Before I dive into what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today, I want to honor uh, the most important person in my life, and that's my wife right over here. Uh, yesterday was her birthday. It was her 17th annual, 29th birthday, uh, yesterday. And so, would you honor my wife, Jimmy Lynn, right now? This coming summer, we will have been married uh, 25 years, and uh, I can't tell you, um, my mind has raced to try to figure out how in the world did 25 years go by so quick. Uh, but for her, it wasn't quick. For me, it was great. She had to deal with me. So she, you know, uh, she got the bad end of the deal. I got the great end of the deal. So I just want to honor my wife for her love and, and for our journey together. So it was, it was July 2nd, 1863. I want you to imagine for just a moment you're now uh, in a battle, the North, the South. This is the Civil War. I want you to feel the sweat. I want you to feel the tears. I want you to hear the wails of wounded soldiers. I want you for just a moment to come to a place of reality that your regiment has been half killed. So what you started with, you're now half of what you were. I want you to imagine now the rest of you, the remaining living, that are now about to engage in the most fierce battle of their lives. Most of you are now wounded, some of you severely wounded. There's blood dripping from most of the men in this battle. Then I want you to imagine the reality that you only have two bullets in your gun. Each of you. The entire regiment. Two bullets left. Then I want you to imagine looking down the hill and seeing uh, your enemy coming against you. They know they outnumber you. Five to one. Hopeless. That's what they were feeling. I want you to imagine for just a moment that that's you. Now, you're on the losing side of the game. You're on the losing side of the war. What do you do? Two bullets left. Most of you wounded. Some severely wounded. Half of you are already dead. What do you do? What are you going to do? Then I want you to imagine for just a moment, the enemy now is surging. They're 50 yards away. 50 yards. And they're engaging you. Colonel Chamberlain issues an order to his men. Hopeless. But he issues an order. He says to them, he says, men, strap on the steel. The bayonet. We're going fist to cuff with these guys. And then in this moment of brilliance or sheer survival, but what it really was, was audacity. In that moment of audacity, he stands on a wall as the enemy is surging. The enemy knows they've already won. In their minds, they've already defeated Chamberlain and his regiment. In their minds, they've already won 
this battle. They're now the battle of Round Top. They've already won in their minds. Chamberlain commands his men to strap on the steel. He stands on a wall, sword drawn, and he points at his enemies. And he yells at the top of his voice, audacity. He yells, charge! It inspired his men to engage in the battle, but what was so amazing was a change in one moment because of one man's audacity. It changed the mindset of the enemies who thought they had already won. It changed the mindsets of the people who had already assumed, we've got this in the back. We're just going to wipe these guys out like we've already done half of them already. And now they hear Chamberlain standing on a wall declaring this charge. And it stopped the enemies dead in their tracks. They were shocked. They couldn't imagine that somebody would have that kind of audacity. That somebody would have that kind of fierce courage to attack or oppose them. And they stopped. Here's what's amazing. In just the ensuing two or three minutes after that, all bullets were fired from Chamberlain's regiment. Meaning they now had no bullets, no ammunition, not a single weapon had another bullet left in it. The others, the other side, the enemy, retreats. Chamberlain surges now with his men. They take captive 400 men without a bullet in their gun. What changed the game? What changed the game? Audacity. That day, a moment of, of epic proportions changed the course of our country. Many believe, historians, as they review uh, the Civil War, believe that was the turning point of the United States being the United States. Audacity. One person's, one leader's audacity can change the course of history. One leader's audacity can change the course of a nation. It can change the course of our world. If we look at the ripple effect of that one day, our world has been affected by one man's audacity. I want you to write this down in your notes. Audacity is this. It is shockingly bold, daring, fearless, brave, courageous, and heroic behavior. Uh, sweetheart, I need the uh, clicker there. I didn't bring it with me. Did it work? Is it up there? No. Oh, maybe I need to go the other direction. Somebody help me with the instructions. You see, audacity is that shocking moment. It, it's not average. It's not normal. It's, it's not something that is, in, in this sense, you can measure. It is something that is shockingly bold. It is daring. It is sometimes brazen because it stands in the face of the odds. That's what Chamberlain did that day. Audacious. I would imagine today that many of you could tell me stories of audacity as you started a business. Bill last night shared with us repeated moments of audacity to forge forward. Audacity. Today what I hope to call out in you and from you is a new level of resolve in your leadership to be audacious. I think in many Christian circles, audacity is not a word that we would embrace because, to be honest with you, if we really look at the word, there is a dark side to the word because it can imply recklessness. It, it can imply maybe half, uh, haphazard um, reactions. That's not at all what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about that moment where the world is shocked because of heroic courage, heroic behavior, a fearlessness. You know, when you look at the pages of Scripture, you see one story after another story of audacity. Every chapter, every book, you see one story after another of audacity. For example, Imagine this moment of audacity. God calls a guy, a common average Joe, his name is Gideon, to do something amazing to save a nation. 
So Gideon in his mind is beginning to prepare the plan of attacking strategies, although this really isn't his cup of tea. It's not his forte. He's not really trained to do this. It's audacious just in the fact that God said, Gideon, you're the guy. I'm handpicking you to do something spectacular. And so now here Gideon's trying to formalize his plan. He's thinking, well, I need an army of scale, an army of magnitude, warriors that can go and do what God's asking us to do. And then God, in a moment of audacity, says, no, let's strip that down. And, and you, you just think for a moment. Imagine you're Gideon. And God says, no, no, we're not going to do it that way. We're, we're going to whittle you back. We're going to minimize you to where the odds are so far skewed against you that it's impossible for you to succeed. That's what God said to Gideon. Audacity, wouldn't you say? Audacious. Do you, do you realize today that God is audacious? Shockingly fearless. Heroically brave. The courage that he calls from us, the courage that he calls out of us. Gideon was just one of many. Let's talk about a moment of audacity for Sarah, now well into her years, right? She's past the age and the ability, the physical realities of her having a child. And God says, hey, Guess what? You guys are you're going to be blessed and all of this is going to come from you. And that's why she's thinking, she was laughing out loud, you're right, that's going to happen. <laughs> Audacity. Then God to birth a nation with impossibilities, with improbabilities. Let's talk about uh, Noah. Um, Noah, I'm calling you to do something absolutely ridiculous in the common sense and logic of humanity. Moses, or excuse me, Noah would have to be himself quite audacious to even entertain what God was asking of him. Audacity. Builds an ark in the middle of a place where maybe at best, little dew on the ground at best. And now he's going to build an ark to save the creatures of the world. God's uh, requirement, request, his call on Noah's life, audacious, but Noah's response. Pure, audacious leadership. Let me talk about some other moments of audacity in Scripture. Let's talk about the day that Jesus is speaking to thousands of people and he's spoken for a period of time that now they're hungry. And it's really too late for them to send them away. And, and so Jesus says, hey guys, just you know, kind of gather what you've got. And all they have is five loaves and two fish. The disciples are coming, which any one of us would have done. Jesus, we don't have enough. We'll get all these people. We can't do this. And in this moment of audacity, Jesus says, bring it to me. Let's just see what's going to happen. Thousands of people fed with plenty left over. Another moment of audacity, a man by the name of Lazarus dies. He's now in the grave. Jesus is away doing business. He's in ministry. He's, he's expanding the kingdom of heaven on earth. And so while he's gone, Lazarus dies and he gets word and he's coming home. And Lazarus has now been in the grave days. The stink of death on his body. Audacity, Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come forth. Audacity. You see, we have one example after another example of audacity in Scripture. And sometimes I wonder why we don't take more audacious steps in our business, in our ministries, in our lives. Because really, when we look at it, God himself is audacious, shockingly bold. Uh, Bill said it last night. He is not tame. He is audacious. Maybe God is asking something of you that is going to require an audacity you have yet to demonstrate. Maybe God is asking something of you. Like, for example, I can imagine right now, there is somebody sitting in this place that is entertaining a new business. And you just haven't yet had the audacity to do it. Maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe the you know you run the numbers, something doesn't jive. But yet in your heart you feel compelled by God to do this, but you're not doing it yet. Maybe the step for you today is to take that audacious step 